Honourable Ministers, Ambassadors, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, friends and colleagues. When the General Assembly adopted a resolution last year proclaiming the 3rd of March as World Wildlife Day, it reaffirmed the intrinsic value of wildlife and it also recognised the contribution that wildlife makes towards sustainable development and human well-being in many different ways. We are delighted that the permanent missions of Germany and Thailand have hosted this event today in New York, which focuses on the contribution that wildlife makes to sustainable development. And in the few moments I have available to me, I'd like to just share a few examples with you of both consumptive and non-consumptive use of wildlife that does contribute towards sustainable development. Millions of tourists every year interact with wild plants and animals, whether they're snorkeling in a coral reef or whether they're watching mountain gorillas in the wild or enjoying a safari. And this wildlife-based tourism generates hundreds of thousands of local jobs. And it's also a major source of foreign earnings for a number of countries. But if the wildlife goes, so do the tourists, so do the jobs, and so does the revenue. To give a couple of examples of consumptive use, we are regulating trade in python skin from Southeast Asia, in the meat of the Queen Conch from the Caribbean, in the wool of the vicuño from Latin America, in the bark of the African cherry from Africa, and in the skin of the alligator from the United States. These are all examples of where people are benefiting from using and trading in wildlife and wildlife products, but without detrimentally affecting the survival of the species. And if you'd like to know more of these examples, I'd invite you to have a look at this short brochure that uh, hopefully is available with you there in New York today. And that gives a lot more information about each of the examples I've just shared with you. However, the sustainability of this trade and the sustainability of both the consumptive and non-consumptive use of wildlife is put under severe threat from the illegal wildlife trade. And this illegal wildlife trade needs to be brought to an end if we're going to ensure the sustainability of these uses. Just with these examples and the many more I'm sure that you will discuss today, we have great hope for a future where, or a sustainable future, where wildlife and people can coexist in harmony. Thank you.